my grade tens, I'm going to be doing two examples with you based on the principle of conservation of charge. I have written out these examples and I'm going to work through them step by step so that you can see what is best practice for answering a question like this. So the first thing we do is read. You should have a pen, pencil, highlighter, something in your hand that you can underline with and scratch down information as you are reading and finding important bits of information. So a sphere with a charge of positive 5 microcoulombs makes contact with a sphere of charge minus 9, what is the charge on each sphere after contact? So the first things we should do is say, right, we've got a positive and a negative charged sphere. They are making contact. We know that the principle of conservation of charge says that the total charge before is equal to the total charge afterwards. So what we can do then is we can draw our little spheres out. We can say, right, that's plus five um, microcoulombs. And the next one is minus nine microcoulombs. Sorry if I do pause in between. I do have things going on around me at home. Um, right, so positive 5 microcoulombs and minus 9 microcoulombs. We know that they're going to make contact and then they're going to move apart from each other. After that, we know that they will both have the same charge. This is before and this is after. We'll both have the same charge because the charge, like charges, repel and the charges are going to disperse, the electrons specifically are going to disperse as far away from each other as possible. So, we then do all of the conversions that we need to do before we start finding a formula or substituting or anything like that. So, we know this is microcoulombs, and microcoulombs has got a conversion of times 10 to the power of minus 6. So, this is now positive 5. Instead of micro, we write down times 10 to the power of minus 6 coulombs, and this you can just draw arrows, is now minus 9 times 10 to the power of minus 6 coulombs. Right, now that we have done our conversions, we can pick our formula. Your formula, the simple most basic one is Q, meaning Q, the charge on either sphere afterwards, because they are the same, is equal to the charge on sphere 1 added to the charge on sphere 2 before the contact or physical process occurs divided by 2 because there are 2 spheres. So the total charge before is equal to the total charge after but to find the charge on one of those we divide by 2. So substituting in our first sphere is plus 5 times 10 to the power of minus 6 Add a 2 in brackets, please, minus 9 times 10 to the power of minus 6, all over 2. Right, calculator work. There is a specific way that I like you grade teens to start using your calculators. So put your brackets in. I'm not sure how much of this you can see, but you can see where I'm pointing. So put your um, fraction in and start with your brackets. So it's positive 5, and then use this exponent button, please. This times 10 to the power of, rather than putting everything in. It cuts out a lot of time, and it cuts out error as well. So times 10 to the power of, minus 6. Close your brackets. Add it to Another open bracket, minus 9 to the power of minus 6. Close that bracket over 2. So everything is in one calculation and equal. When you get a big scary number like that, it's not so big and scary. Your STD button and minus 2 times 
10 to the minus 6. We have converted them into coulombs. So this answer is coming out in coulombs. This is this charge is also on each of those spheres that we had before. So minus 2 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs on each sphere. Okay, you can write a little line there to explain your answer. Um, sometimes we don't have time for that exact practice in an exam. So this is the most important part of your answer. In other sections, this does become very important. So this is why I'm trying to train you guys to start with that explanation part now as well. So let's go back and read our question. See if we have answered everything that has been asked of us. A sphere with a charge of positive 5 microcoulombs makes a contact with a sphere of charge minus 9 microcoulombs. What is the charge on each sphere after contact? We have found the charge on each sphere after contact. So we have our final answer. Right. If we start looking at example 2, we will see that by reading it, it says sphere A has a charge of positive 6 millicoulombs and touches sphere B. After contact, sphere B has a charge of plus 7 millicoulombs. What was the original charge of sphere B? So let's do our before and after, fill in what information we have, and then we'll take it from there. So sphere A has a charge of plus 6 microcoulombs, touches sphere B. After contact, sphere B has a charge of plus 7 millicoulombs. So I'm going to write B over there. What was the original charge? So let's do our before and after. Often drawing a picture really helps to clarify things because now you can list what you have and where. So before we have sphere A and B. They make contact and would then repel each other. You have A and B. Right, so sphere A has a charge of positive 6 millicoulombs before and touches B. After contact, sphere B has a charge of plus 7 millicoulombs. What was the original charge? So this is what we're trying to find of sphere B. Right, first thing to notice over here is that we have got conversions to make. So I'd like to do that first and then we will move on with tackling the question. So millicoulombs is times 10 to the power of minus 3. So let's convert that. Positive 6 times 10 to the power of minus 3 coulombs. And this becomes positive 7 times 10 to the power of minus 3 coulombs as well. Right. Then, the next thing we notice is that after, they've given us a charge only of sphere B. But if we look at our equation over here, ignoring all of the stuff that we did, this Q after tells us that each sphere has the same charge after contact. So that would mean that this one here is also 7 millicoulombs. Right, so at this point, we should be writing down our equation. The charge on each sphere before, oh sorry, after, is equal to the charge on sphere A before, added to the charge on sphere B before, divided by 2, as there are 2 spheres. Right, now the information that we know needs to be substituted into the equation and then we will mathematically rearrange it and find our final answer. So, we know that after contact, each sphere will have a charge of positive 7 times 10 to the power of minus 3 coulombs. And before contact, Sphere A has a charge of positive 6 times by 10 to the power of minus 3 as well. 
we do not know the charge of sphere B and that is the aim to find that. We also know that in our equation over 2 should be there. Right, so to mathematically rearrange this and make it simpler, if everything on this side is divided by 2, we should multiply both sides by 2. So in our next step, we will go 2 into positive 7 times 10 to the minus 3, to the power of minus 3. And over here, what will be left over is positive 6 times by 10 to the power of minus 3 and QB. Now, to simplify this line, we will multiply 2 into there, and that will give us, if you do it on your calculator, it should give you 0 0.014. Now, this is added on this side, so we're going to minus it from both sides to take it across. Okay, so minus 6 times 10 to the power of minus 3 is equal to QB. So when putting that in your calculator, you will get an answer of 8 times 10 to the power of minus 3 coulombs is equal to the charge on Q, charge on sphere B before contact.